Uh, just a quick update, ran into an unexpected difficulty. Uh, I'll probably just need a few minutes.
Okay, sorry about that, guys. Everything's good now. Uh, it was relevant to some in-game stuff. We had a bit of a mix-up at the last second, but thankfully we spotted that before anything got spoiled. Uh, welcome to the developer stream. Uh, it's definitely been a while, but we're back again here for the version 1.13 stream. Good to see a lot of familiar faces in the chat, and my chatterino just crashed, so let me just reboot that. But it's good to see everyone here. A lot of familiar faces in here. We've got Skylark, Kestrel, There's some of the devs as well. Yeah, Skylark, RGL, FDM, Kestrel. Oh, wow, something's... Okay, it's really not locking my chat arena, so I'm just gonna keep talking while I set up an alternate uh, system for that. Shouldn't take too long. But this is the developer stream for 1.13, also known as the Charging Into Darkness expansion. But Oh, getting echoed there. And... Okay, we're good now. Let's get into it. So, uh, version 1.13 is scheduled to release on Thursday the 28th at 0630 UTC plus 2. So, important thing to note is that this is way earlier than we normally do the updates. It's something we tried with the last expansion because we wanted to make sure we had ample time to... Uh, get stuff ready for like promotions and such. So we're gonna be doing that again. Uh, the in-game news timers have been updated to match this, but just be aware the server downtime is gonna happen a lot sooner than expected. And also keep in mind that everything related to the update is still subject to change. All right, so um, let's get straight into the expansion, I suppose. So Charging Into Darkness is the new Minion Masters expansion coming to this update with the reworked Battle Pass system. Uh, it's gonna, so this update, version 1.13, will be the first cycle of this new expansion. Why does the update site read July the update date? Good question. Uh, I guess it was on the line originally, we moved it forward a bit. But version 1.13 is gonna see the release of the cards Lord Fanriel the Storm Charger, who you can see in the splash art on screen. It's gonna have Dormant Defenders and Resonating Blast Crystal, as well as the skin Galaxy Morelia. Uh, we've done a big write-up on what the upcoming changes to the Battle Pass are. We also had a bit of an in-game pop-up, so we're going to keep it pretty beef, brief here today. If you want to read more about it, we have a big blog post called Battle Pass Restructuring. You should be able to find it pretty easily on our site. So the main details are expansions are now being broken up into three season passes, one for each update in an expansion. They're 50 tiers long and 1,500 rubies, containing all the new cards, the new skin and emote, and a ton of other rewards. Uh, we're going to be previewing the contents of them today. Season tokens are being removed from the game. You can just get the cards directly from certain tiers in the pass. And you can get all of the new cards regardless of whether you pay for the premium pass or not, but they are available earlier in the premium path. And finishing the season pass is going to get you a lot of glory for all of the new cards. So... Thankfully, we finally got rid of the season token frustration. I'm sure many of us, I mean, some people on the dev, on the dev team even, have uh, experienced going the entire season without getting one legendary card. That's gone now. Good, good riddance if you ask me. Uh, any, anywhere else in the game where the reward was previously a season token is being changed to a power token, obviously. But they're just gone from the game. As per usual, the end of this expansion, your season tokens that are left over will get changed over into normal power tokens. All right, so, um, see if I can get this set up here and then we can take a look in game. All right, there we go. Okay, so. Yep, yeah, okay, we're gonna go hop straight into the game now, so. At the part in the rudimentary arena. We had something better set up, but we had a couple of uh, last minute issues. So, we're going to be showcasing the Battle Pass contents here, and it's going to include a demo of the Resonating Blast Crystal, as has been advertised. Um, so, we're just going to hop into the pass here. You'll notice here at the top we've got a lower XP requirement. As mentioned on the blog, the, um, at the start of the Battle Pass, you get lower. Well, the XP requirement's a lot lower, but it scales upwards 
Overall, the XP requirement to complete a battle pass is the exact same as 50 tiers in the old pass. This just makes it easier to get the first couple of tiers. So yeah, at, season, at tier 1 you can get Cosmic Morelia. So there's that and a bunch of bonus glory, all the good stuff here. Tier 6 you can get some copies of Resonating Blast Crystal on the premium path. Tier 14 you get yourself some Dormant Defenders. And a bunch of Shards up here as well. You notice there's a lot of currency coming on in here. Tier 22, you get yourself Lord Fanriel the Storm Charger on the premium path. You notice also there's a lot of like bonus cards we're throwing in here as well. Tier 30 gets you the uh, gets you the Dormant Defenders on the free path. You get yourself some, some copies of Guardian as well on premium. Tier 38, nice uh, Storm Charger Avatar for the Premium Path. 38 gets you the Resonating Blast Crystals on the free one. Get some copies of Lord Sentinel Felix, in, in case you needed those. Always nice to have some more Crystal Elf cards in here. And Tier 49 will get you Lord Fanriel the Storm Charger on the free path. And you get your nice little Stabby Puff here for the Premium Path at Tier 50. I've never seen a Crystal Elf that enthusiastic about stabbing someone. And of course, when you complete the 50th tier of the Battle of the uh, Season Pass, and I believe that's on either the free or the premium one, uh, you get bonus glory towards your cards. I think it's separated between the two of them, but... And of course, I've seen some requests to uh, look at the skin. Uh, I am British, yes. I, uh, I, I came from the UK, and I started working in Denmark. So let's take a look at Cosmic Morelia. We'll get her a look down at the bottom as well, because this angle's uh Well, it gives you a good it gives you a good, uh, good angle from that here, but we can also go and take a look at this here. Get those nice little black holes on her shoulder. Love those. Great particle effects there. Do you get the glory retroactively purchase the pass? Yes, you get all rewards retroactively if you buy it, like say when you completed it. So we're going to take Cosmic Rally into a game, and we're going to showcase the three cards coming in this update. Resonating Blast Crystal, Dormant Defenders, and Fanriel. So it's time to beat up our old friend King Puff. Always the uh, target dummy for us. I don't think they even pay him for this. Oh, well we're starting off with Resonating Blast Crystal, so we're going to showcase here. I'm just going to cast this here. So what Resonating Blast Crystal does is it causes damage in an area, and you'll notice it leaves this, uh, like, dormant crystal here. So I'm going to cast this on the crossbow dudes. You get explosions at the previous location as well. So essentially it's a, it's a spell card that lets you double up on the damage you're dealing. You can either put them together and get a lot of burst damage, or you can split them across the map to cover more ground. It's a pretty versatile damage spell. We'll show off the Dormant Defenders here. They're completely inactive until I get, until I get a Mana Surge. And then they're off. Master Damage. Um, we'll take a look at it at the Power Tower. I'm pretty sure it has reduced Master Damage. We'll see. How long the Crystal lasts in the ground? I'm not sure it has any specific duration. I think it just lasts there forever. But you can only have one inactive um, crystal at a time. It just expends the one that was already there. Oh no, it's falling a balance change. Don't look. Don't look up there. Alright, so we got Fanriel here. Uh, this seems like a good opportunity for it. Off he goes. He's going to start charging in a couple of seconds. Or not, okay. I'll have to check the replay on what happened there. Thinking about a collided with something at the start. Oh, wait, no, I remember now. It's not... <laughs> okay, before we start panicking, that's not a bug. He needs to be, like, on his own before he starts charging. I spawned him next to an enemy. You can't do that. He needs to be spawned further back. 
False alarm. All right, so that's gonna do it for showing the new cards. I'm a pretty big fan of Resonating Blast Crystal myself. Maybe it's just the versatility of it, but it feels pretty good. We'll head to the Power Tower now and uh, show you the stats on it. Uh, I, yes, I believe it does hit air units. And it does, it does 120 damage by default, only 60 damage to Masters. Black Hole and Combustion, new card art. Yes, indeed, we got some new card art for stuff. Ooh. Oh, I wonder if... Let me see. If this is in, this is great. You guys are gonna love... Oh, you're gonna love this. We've got an entirely new Dragon Nest model coming in this update, and look at that. I, this blew my mind when the art team just casually showed off, like, oh, oh, by the way, here's what we were working on this week. We made the best Dragon Nest model that's ever existed. Thanks, guys. And yeah, I'll show off these new card arts as well, as people have noticed. We've got the black hole here. Poor Shihu getting sucked away. And combustion. Oh, thank you, Steven. Yep, we got the new Priestess. The new Priestess, um, this model's been in the works for quite a while. Uh, Keen-eyed viewers probably noticed that one from the uh, trailer video we did a while ago. But she's finally ready to be in-game. Got, got some pretty uh, graceful-looking card out there. Stained glass as well. Didn't even notice that at first. The anime Priestess. <laughs> You think there was another one? Uh, I don't want to go digging for it forever, because obviously we can't stall for too long. People will get bored. Minion Master's law links going on in the chat. And other than that, we've also got a new adventure coming. The Charging Into Darkness adventure. You've seen it previewed on the site. And so this is a one-chapter adventure. Uh, it's releasing 16 days from today, so it's releasing midway through the patch. And important to note is that this adventure is completely free. You don't need to pay anything for this. Uh, maybe I'll do some cheats and preview stuff. Look away. Alright, so here we go. So these are the masters you're going to have to choose between. You've got Lely Elf, which is a new master we've been showcasing. She comes with some pretty cool perks. She gets uh, free resonating blast copies when enemies die. Or some free Arcanist, or maybe the new uh, Lord Fanriel. You can also... The Butcher Law over here. I'm not reading that out today, unfortunately. And we've also got Fergus and Jolo available as bonus masters once you complete the chapter. And as we've mentioned on the site, completing the adventure will take you to a short story, which is going to be the introduction for an upcoming master. So, hope you guys enjoy reading. We've been pretty thrilled to get another story out like that and tie it into the game somehow. Uh, there is a little formatting error right now, but as I said, this is not the final version that's going out, so that's gonna that should hopefully be fixed in time. So see if there's any other requests for Battle Pass content before we move on to the bounce changes, because we have got a lot of those to go through. Is it going to be OP as the original Morelia? I hope not. I really hope not. Alright then, well it looks like we want to move on to the balance changes then. I'll not be one to deny you of that. What is the offer that showed up on the side of the star thingy? 
Uh, I think that's just the that's the battle pass offer pack that's offered to uh, newer players. That's been around for a while, but not anything new as far as I'm aware. Is the Twitch drop fix confirmed that it's patched? Uh, we'll get onto that into a bit, but Twitch drops for regular users should be fixed. Unfortunately, I don't have any news about the VIP or moderator situation, but we'll, we'll get to that in a bit. We've got some uh, pretty juicy stuff coming regarding that. Alright, so to start off with the balance changes, we're going to be going through a bunch of reworks. Because there are quite a few of those coming in this uh, update. So first off, we've already talked about this one, we've got the Accursed Ascension rework. Essentially it's being changed to a mana requirement spent on the Accursed Ascension cards. And the Arcane Bolt rework, as we can see here. I'm not sure what Frank was doing there, but... Uh, Arcane Bolt rework, so the effect's being changed. Uh, it stuns enemies for 5 seconds. If the enemy's HP drops below 500, destroy it. The mana cost is going from 3 to 4, the mana freeze 2 to 1. The main reason we're working this is that we've... we you I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious how many times we've buffed it. We've really tried to make Arcane Bolt work, but... It's too static of a card, really. If it's a very specific niche where it's either going to be ridiculous because it counters certain HP thresholds and just completely invalidates things in the meta, or there's no reason to ever use it. Uh, no, Steven, it doesn't. That was actually a mistake on the BNU. Um, I, I don't know if that got rectified or not. But Crystal Construct and the mana is now being gained on death instead of play, and this also affects Dormant Defenders. They are Crystal Constructs, but you only get to get the mana when they die, instead of on the spawn. And as mentioned, the Squire Puff rework. It's basically becoming more in line with the other puffs now. The Spell Mana Puff just didn't really work. Uh, regarding the Jungle Jumble rework, I'd encourage you to try it out, because we did try this one on the PTR and it was pretty fun. We tried it without the mana discount, it was kind of insane, so. Does that mean Wizard Puff blocks the mana gain? Yes. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd assume so, actually. So that's an interesting bit of counterplay there. You know, the, the Wizard Puff to counter Dormant Defenders strat. Oh, I've been requested by an artist to show off the uh, Fanriel on the Power Tower. I can't believe I didn't actually think of that, but we're just going to take a quick look at that. What if you get a card that already has Growth Burst Shroom? It should stack, as far as I'm aware. I'll give you a close-up of Fanriel there. And I, be I believe someone pointed attention to that mount, but just look at that. <laughs> I actually feel kind of bad that I almost forgot to showcase him, but... That is some good stuff. Health nerf? Yeah, there was a slight health reduction between the BNU and the thing. Uh, we should probably put a disclaimer up there at this point that the cards aren't exactly going to be what comes out in the end, but... What animal is this? Well, maybe an artist can help you with the lore on that one. Because I don't know. Okay, so that's that for the uh, reworks of the cards. Hopefully they're pretty interesting. I found them to, uh... I found them to be, at least. So we're gonna go on to the actual balance changes now. The, uh, smaller adjustments and such. Well, I guess small is pretty subjective for some of these. So first up, we've got... Well, just going alphabetically. So we've got Arcane Rings. Radius is being decreased. The idea with this is to try and make Arcane Rings, like, uh, little bolts, easier to hit other enemies with. Because other times you'd have instances where they're just like, kind of like, uh... Smaller units, some mid-range units would just walk straight through it, and Arcane was kind of useless in that scenario, so we wanted to give it a little buff in that way. We found it much more interesting than buffing its other numbers. ATG drones getting a slight damage increase because it, it kind of dropped off. Uh, the monsters, the effect radius went up because it was just too small after the nerf. Uh, Blood Imps attack speeds going up because they've been pretty bad since the one mana change. Rich Shrine Total Experience is going up a bit. Uh, Curse Bearer is having a pretty big change. Uh, Curse Bearer is a bit of an interesting topic, because, I mean, it's... A lot of people love the card, but we felt it was just way too efficient at the free mana cost of how much it did. 
it was guaranteed damage if you put it next to a uh, really high health minion, the card was pretty broken. And there wasn't really many decks Curse Bear was bad in. And Demon Warrior, attack speed's just going up a little bit. Nothing too drastic. Onto page two, we got the Whelps. Uh, their attack speed's being decreased to 1.1. There should be attack cooldown. I need to make this consistent. Um, also affects the Flight of Dragons and Shadow Whelp, although Shadow Whelp isn't really going to be affected as much as the other two because it doesn't require too much on the attack speed. Uh, Ghost Hearts is uh, receiving a bit of a change. Maybe should have put that in reworks now that I think about it. But its health's going down by 100, but now it's granting a friendly minion spirit on death. So, gives it a nice little bit of extra utility. Grasping Fallen's just a general buff in the numbers. Lelio's Vortex, the pull strength is going up. We, we found the pulling aspect of Vortex to be the most interesting aspect of the card. So, when it came to buffing it, um, we, we figured that was a much more interesting way to touch upon it. And, yeah, Rappo's damage is getting nerfed. Rappo has been really good since the uh, update. And Snake Druid is... This is a... It's a bit of a hard change to break down, but essentially what this change means for Snake Druid is that he has a, he has a much harder time dealing with Swarm. The problem with Snake Druid was he kind of answered way too much in his current state, and something like, uh, say, Scrats such. Snake Druid was actually really efficient at dealing with them because of his low attack cooldown, so we wanted to rescale that. Finally, going on to the last page of the changes. Ting Teng Tung, uh, there's a bug fix that the Rage and Growth Burst Shroom Damage Modifier applies correctly, but their HP is going down to 300, so it's, it's a really big hit there. They now get one shot by a Cleaver, for instance. Uh, Wall's Duration is going up a bit, gives it a bit more permanence, makes it lose less, a little bit less health before the engagements start happening. And yes, Ting Teng Tung is also now Wheel of Doomable. And Zeppelin Bomber's mana cost is going up to 3. And there were a lot of considerations we made with the Zeppelin nerf. Um, basically, with the last patch, we realized Zeppelin Bomber was way stronger than we actually anticipated. But we didn't. We tried around with some changes, but we just didn't like how the card played after that. We liked how much damage the Zeppelin Bomber did because of how impactful it felt, and like reducing the damage to like seventy or something. It just made the card feel bad to play. So we'd rather put it at free matter and perhaps scale it up a bit if it really sucks after this change. We just wanted the card to feel good to play rather than just permanently nerf its damage into the ground. When will Stixie be good? Stixie's good in our hearts, man. He, he's always good in our hearts. He's the MVP. Alright, so that's going to do it for the balance changes. Uh, down to 50, that was actually one of them we considered, but it just it just felt super weak after that. We'd rather put the mana up and then potentially scale up so it still feels like a powerful card, rather than just make it something a lot weaker. Uh, to go back on the Arcane Bolt change... Yes! Uh, wait, let me just read let me just read this to make sure I've got this correct. The card is above 500 HP to stun it, below 500 HP to destroy it. What does it work like? Okay, so the way the Arcane Bolt change works is, let's say you have a Colossus with 600 HP, and you use Arcane Bolt on it, so it's going to stun it for 5 seconds, and during that time, if Colossus goes below 500 HP, you destroy it automatically. Uh, yeah, Haunting Hugger gives you two, uh, it's not really essence, but two towards the requirement for a Curse Ascension. 
Yeah, it's a pretty big buff for Arcane Ball. We, well, I suppose a rework considering the mana adjustments, but it, it's a card we've been trying to find a, a good spot for for ages, but it wasn't really happening without a big change. So, uh, next up on the docket, we have the Twitch Drops compensation we've been talking about before. Um, so for those that weren't aware, I mean, you're on Twitch, but we'll have to we'll say it just in case. That we ran into technical issues of the Twitch API this patch, which meant Twitch Drops just weren't working. And the nature of the issue meant we couldn't fix it until the release of this expansion. Um, so we want, to, we want to extend like a sincere apology for the problems. So we're planning to do a massive boost towards the Twitch drops um, for a limited time during the update. So uh, tentatively, this isn't finalized, it might change, but from the, eight, from the 11th to the 18th of June, Twitch drops are going to be worth three times as much gold. So you're going to get 300 gold for each drop you get during that event. And there's been a bunch of news and stuff posted about it closer to the time to maybe clarify on things or just serve as a reminder, but... Hopefully this is going to more to make up for the gold loss during the issue, and we're really sorry that happens. Other than that, uh, we have a login bonus coming for this expansion. Um, if you log in between May 28th and June 2nd, you'll get yourself a free copy of Crystal Construct, Spirit Vessel, and Crystal Archers. And I've also got... hmm. Maybe a teaser that we've got another big gift coming with the expansion release. So maybe you want to be keeping your eyes peeled on the 28th this week. Uh, we'll head we'll into some Q&A now. And if there's any special requests or stuff you want me to show you in-game again, then uh, we'll let you have a look at that. But... Will saving for Jade Spark, saving Jade Spark Jungle Chapter Two be fixed in this patch? Uh, I can take a quick look at that. I don't need plans to do an expansion focused on Outlanders at all. Uh, not at the moment, I think. It's, 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 top, it's a topic we want to get into detail about. At some point in the future, we don't have any plans for anything outlander related at the current point in time. Will you recognize my existence? No. <laughs> Will there ever be card cosmetic skins? Uh, no, we're not planning on that. Um, we, we've, we had the idea like a long time in the past, but a lot of it came down to unit rec um, recognizability. I don't know if that's the right word for it, but... Why about the Deadly Beam? Why does it do significant damage to Master? I assume you mean Beam of Doom? Um, it does hurt... Um, I can't remember if it does half damage or we switch it to be the other way around, but it used to do full damage. We have time for a word a bit after the stream? Of course, you can always contact me on the Discord account. I'm assuming the Crystal Construct charge is to make the new card work better. Thoughts on weakening the pure Crystal Construct card? It's interesting because we had a bit of a discussion on this internally and we didn't feel it was like 100% a nerf to the Crystal Construct card. The change to have the matter on death because we've seen mana banking be pretty efficient in the past, so it's possible with some playstyles that maybe having that matter on death is pretty good. Are you gonna add more adventures to the game? There is an adventure coming with this expansion. It's gonna unlock halfway through the update, and it's gonna be free. Bad as a fish is getting beamed a lot. Any solutions? Play APEP. Uh, Jumpy, that sounds like something you should contact support a beta dwarf about. Uh, they might be able to help you out with that. Okay. 
All right then, Jumpy. Uh, we'll try and take a look into that. It's likely it got caught up with the uh, Xbox Ruby issues. Changing the color of the model of the, those perks based on skin. I'm not quite sure what you mean. Like the, the perk icons, altering them for a skin? I don't think it's really anything that's come up before. It's not a terrible suggestion, but that's something we've really considered. Have you seen Steven's Reddit post on the wildcard topic? Um, we did do a bit, we did do a small write up on the wildcards feedback in the last blog. Uh, right now, we are keeping things as they are, but we're investigating other solutions, what we could possibly do to the wildcards thing. I mean, personally, I, I did give it a read-through. We all do, so. Is it possible to play only Crystal Deck? I'm, I'm pretty sure. Alright then, I think that's going to do that for the Q&A then. I think we'll, uh... Look, look like you uh, appreciate uh, fan rail a bit more as we do the outro for the stream. Mix things up a little bit. Obviously giving a hand to our artists for uh, this, the amazing job they've done in this expansion. Uh, we don't have any changes for the draft mode planned at the moment. Alright then, so that's going to do it for today. Uh, I hope you guys are having a great quarantine. Well, I say great, but... As best as one you could have. Um, stay safe and all that. And we'll hope to see you on Thursday for the release of the expansion.